You're the only person that hasn't touched uh, Nick's chest today. So, uh, you know SF Game Night? That mm. It's like a thing that you just stab yourself in the mouth with straw on camera. And I'm not gonna, this is the take we're using. I hope you know that. <laughs> we're sticking with it. Um, anyway, that's SF Game Night. <laughs> SF Game Night. Uh, so it's this thing here in San Francisco where um, a bunch of people show up at this bar. Yeah, it's and awesome. they just like, they project Mario Kart 64 on a big screen and they've got like Pokemon Stadium tournaments and Tower Fall and just it's every local. It's surprisingly cool. Yeah, and like, yeah, exactly. That was my reaction too, is I was like, I didn't expect this to be tight, but it is. Um, but I was there last night and um, there was a setup of four Xbox 360s playing the original Halo 2, which is backwards compatible on the 360, mm. yeah. set up on System Link. Yeah. Um, with like, that why you were tweeting about how good you are at Halo 2? I got 2? pretty drunk and played a lot of Halo 2, like an actual classic Halo 2 for the first time in 10 mm. years. That game's still just fun as hell. Like, dude, I don't know how nostalgic you are for Halo 2, but. I am, well, so I went, I guess it was last week I went with you on yeah. Thursday. And there's a group of people Four people playing it is like you know two v two, right? And I was just watching them. There's these two kids who are really good, and these other two guys that were like really loud and totally terrible. <laughs> it was very entertaining. Oh, I remember them, yeah. Yeah, and I mean that was like, I mean in a way that's half of like my nostalgia for Halo is like kind of the insanity and everyone freaking out and just having a good time. Yeah. But it was so cool watching that game again. Like I've played so many games since Halo Two, but like watching it again. I'm just like, I cannot wait for the Master Chief play. Right. I cannot wait to play that again well, with better better looking graphics. The weird thing though is that between Master Chief Collection and playing like literal classic Halo 2 on mm. a, like running on a backwards compatible Xbox, I think I'm more excited for the HD version of Halo 2 than I am for Anniversary because like, I don't think yeah. the changes in Anniversary are necessarily great. I don't think it looks that much better. I think the guns sound weird just because I'm used to it. But what, what sure. most excited me about playing Halo 2 last night was the fact that like it's like riding a bike like mm. I just got right back into it yeah. I knew how all the guns felt it was just like knowing the maps and the radar and everything yeah mm. so that was what, so funny like me watching people play I was like oh dude I totally like I knew the map so well that I knew what the guy was doing yeah it was crazy do you so are there any games that you first of all how dare you <laughs> second of all do you have any games that you've like gone back and played with like a decade's distance to see how you feel oh, about God, them now oh god a decade it's weird that it's been a decade, by the way, since, that's like, 2004. Jesus. I don't that's know how that's possible. Mind. I actually did go back recently and play the original Rayman game. Oh, really? Because I that was, like, the first PC platformer that I ever played. Yeah. That shit still holds up. That's It's still really thing. good. And, and you can really tell, like, with the recent games, like, Rayman Legends, how they just build upon the mechanics that were already in the first game. Like, nothing about that series has fundamentally changed. Interesting. It's just gotten better somehow every time. It's crazy. God, That's, I love Rayman. How did it look? Because what, what's so great about the new ones is the hand-done, like, 2D animation. Yeah, I mean, it was on a PC, so it it it's definitely looks better than, like, an Xbox original game. Right. It doesn't look bad. I mean, it's very... The resolution is extremely small right, so yeah. but the actual art assets and stuff are really good for the time I think I was like probably 12 or 13 Jeez. yeah wow it's always weird seeing what games hold up and which ones don't for me you can never predict yeah. it exactly like I no, you can't I, they're like Sonic Spinball is a weirdly specific game that I have a shitload of nostalgia for but when you go back and play that game now just like the way even when you're running around as Sonic when you're not in ball form just looks and feels and plays like poop from a butt. Same with yeah. Sonic 3D Blast. <laughs> I thought that game was tight. I thought Sonic 3D Blast was the shit Me when it too. came out. That game's not super good no, at all. It's not. Trying to play Sonic also on a modern console is so weird. Oh, the controller. Like I can only yeah, I can only enjoy Sonic on the original Sega Genesis controller because mm. that's how I played it for so many years. And it's almost I feel it's more difficult to play on like a 360 yeah. controller. I remember trying to play um, what was the Sonic game that came out like three or four years ago? Was it Sonic 4? Or. Uh... It, I think it was before that. Oh, God. There was. Uh, Put me on the spot. I got it was name before all the Sonic. Generations. Was it Unleashed? No, maybe it oh, was. Oh, so it was Unleashed Generations, um, the Sonic and the Black Knight on the Wii, Sonic Colors on the Wii? No, it came out right around the time of Sonic Colors, though, because I remember it was like one of the first games that I covered as a video game journalist. Huh. And it was like, I remember we went to this theater in Japantown and they had the game set up in like a movie theater. And I played it and I was like, oh man, Sonic, like I haven't played this forever, I'm so excited. And I was just like failing so hard at it. And I realized it was the controller. Mm. Like you get so used, and that's like such a precise platforming game yeah. mm -hmm. that like the, the way you play it really, really matters. 
And the controller on 360 I mean, just was not working you're right. for me. Because if you think about the 360 controller, it's got two pieces of directional input. It's got the stick, and playing Sonic with an analog stick, like a 2D Sonic game with an analog stick, makes zero sense. And then yeah. it's got the world's worst D-pad in the history of D-pads. Exactly. So it was like, that makes sense. It's exactly. The, the D-pad on the Sega Genesis was terrific. Hell yeah. Why can't they just do that again? I. But then... I'm getting to this point in my life now where I'm questioning everything I thought I knew from that era in our lives. I'm like, was it actually a good D-pad if we went back today and touched it? <laughs> you know it? what? I wouldn't mind if they released a retro controller. Because, mm -hmm. like, you, you see some of that. Like, the Wii U Pro controller is pretty, mm -hmm. like, limited. But, like, I don't... What if I want to play something like retro games on a controller that does not have an analog stick? I, it's so hard to even do that now unless you play them on the original console. That's true. For me, yeah. my go-to is still the DualShock 4. I, like, I'm using that for basically everything at this point on the PC, and it's amazing. Um, yeah. But then, like, think about like the NES controller and how it was literally a rectangle. That they made not they made ergonomic at all. Zero accommodations for the human hand. They do like fuck. Yeah. We don't, we don't care about comfort. It's yeah. We want four this hard to hurt edges after an hour. The softest parts of your hands. Just exactly. Right angles. That's what made the Genesis controller so great. It was ergonomic but mm -hmm. simple. And yeah. actually, for the time, it was quite advanced. And because yeah. you have the three buttons on, my, the, on the right. Dude, there was one version. One of my controllers. I don't know why. I had six. I had A, B, C, and then like X, Y, and Z right above mm, it. Interesting. <laughs> You know a, a game I really want to play again, and, and I did like I guess like two years ago, and I really enjoyed it was uh, Twisted Metal for like the Whoa. PS2, oh. and I just like I don't remember which one it was. Uh, they made a few, but that game looked like complete doo doo. Even at the time. Uh, Even at the time, I remember like it looking good, and then yeah. when I played it like two years ago, it looked so bad. But I actually had a great time playing it. Like it was, so, it's so huh. arcadey. I feel like any arcadey game can hold up really well. Absolutely. It's something about like just like pure mechanics, like good mechanics, like hold up and they last. I think Twitch can always be fun. Yeah. yeah. Anything twitchy or actiony will pretty much be okay. I just feel like in general though that era, the PS1 and N64 era, is like this awful, almost like uncanny valley isn't the right word, but it's just like a severe down tick in human history of like. SNES games, Genesis games still look great for the most yeah. part. 2D, beautiful, hand-drawn art, sprites. N64 games and PS1 games, no, yeah. fucking nightmares. Because that's when they were like, oh my god, 3D, we can do this. Let's do it everywhere. Yeah, we can and technically we, do this. Yeah. And we did it with the, while sacrificing like everything else. Everything. Yeah. It was like real Everyone, bad. like, go back and play GoldenEye. I remember thinking it looks good. Yeah. Dude, GoldenEye. I remember thinking GoldenEye looks fucking great. I do, like, I remember, like, I can remember what it looked like to me. Yeah. And that clashes to what it actually looks like in reality. And of I course. feel like there's something wrong. Like, I'm <laughs> Your like, frame of reference is what's wrong. I guess so. It's rose tinted glasses, right? I, yeah. So, like, literally this past weekend, I <coughs> downloaded uh, the uh, Ocarina of Time 3D on the 3DS. Because it was one of those games that I didn't have a 3DS at the time when it came out, so I downloaded it. And that game does a remarkable job of looking the way I remember Ocarina of Time looking. Yeah, uh -huh. because you've literally compressed the resolution down, so like. <laughs> yeah, but they've also redone all the artwork so that like, if it's funny, when you look on the internet and look at like what Zelda's face actually looked like in Ocarina of Time, uh -huh. it's not human. Like, she has <laughs> she has hair, but really she's just a spiky polygon and part of that polygon is yellow. Uh -huh. um, and it's cool because on, on the one hand, like running around that first village, it looks the way I remember it looking. And there's no way in hell it actually looked that good in real life if you look at it side by side. But the other weird thing is there are tiny things that look off. Like, remember that dude in Ocarina of Time who's got his hands on his hips and he's like, he won't let you in to yeah. go visit the Deku tree? That dude has a face now, <laughs> like an actual face with expressions and yeah. a face. And yeah. I was like, that's just not right. That's yeah. not, he's not supposed to have like a discernible emotion <laughs> at all. Right. Nintendo, I feel, is the company that's the best at like doing remakes of old yeah. games and making them look and feel like the original games. Mm -hmm. I think what's interesting is they're not above changing the gameplay too. Like they fixed the water temple by all accounts in that yeah. 3DS OOT. I was gonna mention Wind Waker because they did change the art style of that a lot, but it's not necessarily worse than it was mm. before. It's just different. Yeah, I think Nintendo is like in general they're like one their games like hold up the best, but also whenever they do remake a game, the the arts they they know what to keep in terms of like the aesthetics that are most crucial to like the core experience. Yeah, and, you know like. Like, Wind Waker looks beautiful, and they did change a lot. They, like, added a little more, like, uh, I feel like wispy, like, swirly things that, yeah. I mean, feel appropriate. Yeah. 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 And it, But it, it works, and, like, they're adding, like, the, the it, it's 69 instead of 4.3, so you see way more of the world, but. And a selfie camera. I know we've talked about that before, <laughs> but that's the best thing ever. I know, it's great. I want them to retroactively add that to all of their old games. Mario 64 kind of almost has it. 
They needed more of it. True. Yeah. I want more Mario selfies. That game. True. I want that on the Wii U. True. Like, that's actually weird that the one time they remade Mario 64, it was on the original DS. Right. Like, that game deserves an actual, even just a, a port of the DS version. That's probably my favorite Mario game of all time. It, it is. Most, most people, actually. actually. You want to talk about games Super, that hold Super up. Mario Galaxy is the best. Well, I think, it's the best, I think it's the best, you know, like, relatively recent one we have. I have but special memories tied to Mario 64. It's and it, so you, good. Like, you want to talk about N64 games that still hold up. That game still feels and runs amazing, oh, yeah. which is crazy when you consider what a first it was in so many ways for so mm. many genres and for Nintendo. The fact that that game is still playable is a miracle, much less that it's oh, yeah. like better than anything else on the N64 today. Of yeah. course, that shit blew my mind back then. I was like, what 3D Mario game? Yeah. What world is this? Yeah. Where am I? It was so beautiful too. Like, I just remember like exploring it and being like literally just blown away at every turn. <laughs> yeah. Like say what you will about the way Nintendo handles themselves in the modern world, but like the fact that they managed to take their two biggest franchises and bring them into 3D and get it right on the first fucking try, right? that's insane. Dude, back then Nintendo was like hitting aces every day. No. It's true. It's a different story. Well, so. and it, I mean they've always been this mad genius, right? I mean I don't want never I hope they never change. I, I hope me they too. Never change. Me too. Like I in a way I love them for all the mistakes they they make, you know, they I, I would be, if they stop making mistakes, I would be afraid that they would stop be, like, being taking able to risks. have, like taking the risks and having like those great moments where mm -hmm. they do make, you know, like a, a 3D Mario. Like imagine, they e so easily could have said, Mario is never meant to be 3D. Right. That, like that's so easy and that's, I feel like that's what most companies would have they done. They would have shot themselves in the ass if they had done that though because everybody wanted the, nin the Nintendo 64 because it was 3D and they were like, right. man, I want to like, Really want to get into this. This is so cool. Yeah, and that's Nintendo so weird, would just been though. like, "No, we're gonna keep Mario 2D." People would have been like, "Fuck you, Nintendo." Yeah, I would have been like, "Fuck they you, Nintendo." It would have been weird, but they could have done the 3D thing in a way that was maybe a little more, uh, like risk averse. Instead, they made a game where you there's a whole separate camera that you control separately, which is oh, completely yeah. new. On a, these buttons on the side, yeah. and you could zoom in and zoom out the camera, and the camera actually was pretty well behaved considering. Like, yeah, yeah, I, it's it weird. I'm, I'm with you in terms of like. Nintendo still doesn't totally get how the internet works nope. in 2014. Maybe never will. Which is crazy, but then I look back and like my two favorite games of last year, Fire Emblem Awakening, Super Mario 3D World. So they're like, they have this weird bottled magic. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to believe that it's because they plug their ears when the modern world like advances around right. them. But there's got to be something that they're doing that's yeah. making them make these magical games like time after time. It's called time. Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm saying though. Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 2, Super Mario 3D World. I want to believe that in some small way, Reggie is behind all of this. Yeah? The day he dies, the day I quit video games forever. Jeez. Wow. You know, he I mean used it. to be the, he was like a lead marketing guy at Pizza Hut before he really? was at Nintendo. Yeah. Well, was, Pizza Hut sucks now, so. There you, there you go. go. And he was in uh, Panda Express and VH1. I was reading the Wikipedia article for Reggie last night at SF Game Night okay. out loud. That's not weird. I was going to question was doing. why you knew so much it knowledge. It was less than 24 hours ago. I was on Reggie fils -Ami's Wikipedia article. I mean, I end up there every now and then. It's my homepage, you know? Late at night. <laughs>because the press didn't get that game early, because everyone got it the same Monday, because the servers went online and people needed to play with actual humans, um, there were no scores for like the first few days of the week it came out. And then people kind of rushed to review it, and then like Wednesday scores, scores started yeah. to trickle in, which was interesting. And then over the week, as more and more reviews came in, the scores started to get lower and lower.